Hey guys, today we're upgrading the wind turbine from 24 volts up to 48 to bring it in line with the rest of our off-grid power system. Now as you can see it's spinning up there at the minute, so I'll show you how to safely disconnect them during operation. We'll take a close look at the two different control units side by side, play a little game of spot the difference. And I'll also show you how to unlock the Istabreeze control units themselves as they come locked from the factory and you can change the settings on them. When you buy one of these Istabreeze control units, here's what you get in the box. A poorly photocopied instruction manual and the control unit itself. And this unit we've got here, 48 volts at 2 kilowatts. So guys, if you've been watching the channel for a while, you'll know we used to run a 24 volt off-grid power system. Since we switched up to 48, where the components are cheaper and more powerful, we kept the 24 volt as a backup. We've since sold that backup and now the wind turbine is the only part left charging two three kilowatt backup batteries. To disconnect the turbine you're in operation, the first thing you want to do, apply the brake. Once the turbine has stopped spinning, you can then open up your control unit and loosen off the three terminals from each phase. The wind turbine operates three phase AC, so each of these is both a hot and a neutral at the same time. To keep the brake applied when you disconnect these three wires is real simple. You just need one of these. Yes, it's a cable type. We're going to unplug them. We're going to use the cable tie to join them together. Having the three phases joined together like this creates an opposing magnetic field within the windings of the generator itself, meaning that it can't spin, effectively acting like a brake. What does need a bit more care and attention is disconnecting your batteries. What you want to do is disconnect the joiner between the two batteries before you go ahead and disconnect either negative or positive lead. This is the safest way to actually neutralize these, meaning that you don't have any little accidents and create a short circuit. So now we have it down, let's take it into the workbench, play a little game, spot the difference. So here we are guys, YouTube's least favorite location according to our channel statistics. Now before I show you how to unlock these and we go ahead and fit the power meter and all that, let's take a close look at these two and see what's the difference between the 24 volt and the 48 volt, because to me they look identical. Here is the 48. Those relays say 50 amps, 14 volts DC. Settler. AZ9, whatever, is on them. And let's take a look at the 24. Let's try and get in there for a close look. Fourteen volt seventy amp, fourteen volt fifty amp written on those relays. This one here. Fourteen VDC. 40, 50 amp, that's identical to the 48. These ones right here, 24 volt, also says 14 VDC, 70 amp. If we compare that to the other ones, these ones don't give any information on them. Now if we pan out and look at these two units, there's very little in the difference for them. The old 24 has a 32 amp circuit breaker on it. 48 has a 63 one kilo ohm resistor right there looks pretty much the same the difference that i see here is the size of the capacitor in the 48 the capacitor is much bigger and uh, we can actually see the rating on it 200 volts uh 270 270 farads And this one is 100 volts at 470 farads. So looking at these two guys, it's safe to say that if you're handy with a soldering iron, you had some specs on what the board should actually be, and you had some parts from some old tellies, you could convert your 24 volt charge controller into a 48 and save yourself 300 euros. One thing I really don't like about these is the construction quality. If we look at the stickers here, that's the same sticker just cut in half. If we open it up, Around the display, 
got hot glue everywhere. Same down on the circuit breakers. The old 24 one is worse. We take my stuff out of the way. They just hot glued stuff all over the place. You can see some of the old hot glue left over from before I changed the unlock control unit. With that said, these control units do work very well, but they gotta take those hot glue guns out of the factory. I mean, that like a hot glue gun is what you give your kids to play with when they're doing crafts at home. Not something you expect to find in a high performance 300 euro piece of equipment. So let's get into unlocking this new 48 volt controller with the XYCD60 and fitting the power meter into the new casing. Fans of the channel will know I've covered this on previous videos. This display here is locked, whereas this is one that I replaced myself with an unlocked unit. And how they lock them is they desolder the buttons from behind the up and down arrows. And you can just go onto eBay or Amazon, buy yourself one that still has the buttons in it for about 10 or 12 euros. And that gives you full customization of the settings on these control units. Taking the display out can be a little bit tricky with all the glue they slap in there. So you just want to give it a quick blast of a heat gun. Not enough to warp the case, you want to be very careful. And then it'll just pop out to you. Just like so. We then take our unlock display out. Always important to take a picture of the wiring so you can look back on it if you want to connect another one back in again. With this one being unlocked, it just has the two buttons actually behind the up and down arrows here. We bring it over to our new unit. And again, we take a picture of the wiring so we know which is which. And because we're doing this directly one after the other, there should be no confusion as to which one goes where. And it's as simple as that, guys. Take out the locked one and fit the unlocked one. As I said, they cost about maybe 10, 12 euros on eBay, maybe 15. And it take you about 10 or 15 minutes to do it. And that gives you full customization of your settings on these control units. So now let's get into fitting the meter and get it back installed, get the turbine hooked into the 48 volt system. <laughs> So now that that's all done, let's go hook it up and see what happens. Handy tip for you guys, if you're stuck for DC cable, just go to a local parts shop or maybe even some of the discount shops and get yourself some jump leads. You can use those cables, they're good for about maybe 100 amps. This system here is only going to use between 40 and 60 amps, so it's more than adequate for the job. Another handy tip for you guys is, for your bus bars, you can use aluminium instead of copper. Now the copper, because they're sold as bus bars, they tend to be quite pricey. We've recently replaced our old steel ones for these brushed aluminium ones, which are about a third, if not less, than the price of copper bus bars. And they're the second best conductor. Okay, let's get it into place. And this is always the tricky bit, trying to get the wires to fit through. I'm gonna start with the three phases of the turbine. And we get our Negative lead up through. We'll have to trim this down to size, obviously. One thing I don't like about these control units is the gap for wiring is always very small. So here is the tricky bit. The wind is blowing out there and I have to get the three phases of the turbine connected in there before it spins up too fast. So the first thing you want to do, put on the brake. And this is going to be tricky. Off our cable tie and quickity quick get them in there. One, two, three, shove them in. So now with everything in place, only one thing left to do that's switch it on. Oh, we have a light, we are reading 52.4. So now we need to program the display unit. We are going to set the upper limit to 57.6, which is the maximum for bulk charging. And we want to set the lower limit up to 55 and a half, which is the start of the flow charge. So that means basically that the brake will be active between the flow charge level and the bulk charge level. And typically enough, the wind has died down. Beautiful sunset though. Now that the turbine's running at 48 volt instead of 24, it also means it's got twice the load on it, which means it's gonna take more wind to get it spinning up faster. 
And seeing so the wind has decided not to play ball with us here today, we're going to have to do a follow on and get some updates on power readings. But guys, you might have noticed we have a new section here. And that's because we've been having some issues with the MPPT in this. And this is what's going to be the latest stage of upgrades to our system uh, coming in the next video. So guys, you probably don't know this. You're going to see this tomorrow, which will be St. Stephen's Day, Boxing Day in the UK. It's Christmas Day here for us at the moment as I've been filming this. So I'm going to knock it on the head there. I want to say a huge thanks to each and every one of you, especially our regular viewers who tune into us every second week and keep up with our progress here. And I hope you all have a very happy Christmas and best wishes for the new year. Hope you found this useful. Hope you found it interesting. Do take care of yourselves out there. I'll see you in the next one.